Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and I am back with my analysis for the Valhalla Pokemon League Season 4. Thank you so much Skyrender for inviting me to be in the Valhalla Pokemon League. Uh, first things first, if you haven't heard of that Pokemon League, you should go check out Skyrender's channel because he's basically the curator of that league. I'll have his link in the description. And the Valhalla Pokemon League, you guys can see the team I drafted, I'll go over it briefly, but I did wanna let you all know that there are some different rules for this league. Uh, first off, in drafting, it was a snake draft, and every, it was a tier draft as well. Every player gets 90 points to distribute between all the different tiered Pokemon. You have to have at least eight Pokemon and a max of 10. And there's also something during drafting called snipe action that didn't come up for me because I guess I drafted stuff that no one wanted is what that comes down to. But the, the thing with the snipe action is if someone were to cut in and snipe a Pokemon that you wanted, you could use a snipe action to get that Pokemon back, but then you can't use that Pokemon against the person you sniped it from with your snipe action. So that's interesting. Um, in this league, you're allowed to rotate your Z Pokemon or Z move users rather. And all of your Pokemon are allowed to use them, but you can only use three at a time and they're allowed to rotate every three weeks. And finally, the most unique part of this league is the the idea of working on a team. Like I'm on a team with, basically I'm on a team with a few other coaches and all of our accrued KOs and all of our accrued wins goes towards the team. So, what team am I on? I was chosen to be on Eric Ashton Akai's team, which I have battled him before. Fantastic battler. I'm also on a team with Wumar. I've battled him before. And I'm also on a team with Deneki. So, we are the Raz Disciples. And so, basically, all of our wins and KOs will be added up and totaled up and all that good stuff. And then we'll see whose team wins in the end. So, thank you, Eric, for choosing me to be on your team. And uh, let's just go over the team briefly. Now, we are the Victorian Shadows for the Valhalla Pokemon League. Those of you who followed me before know that my other team name is the Eterna City Enders. But I figured if I'm rolling out the Victorian Shadows with the Grandtastic logo, that's right, I had to create a new word for the logo because Bill Standish did such an awesome job with the logo, which his information will be in the description. Be sure you go check out his stuff if you need anything. He made me some awesome logos for the Victorian Shadows. So I figured I'd roll it out alongside with this as I'm doing it in the GBA. Why not? So yeah, that's always fun. So the Victorian Shadows, the team. What did we pick? What order did we pick it in? We actually started drafting a lot earlier for this league than I anticipated. And so I didn't have my draft plan solidified. I was still working on my GBA draft. So I picked something that I know people want to draft and that I knew people might use their snipe actions on. I figure, okay, if I can get someone to burn their snipe action, what's a worthy round one pick? Uh, Mimikyu, that was my first choice. I've never used it in a draft format. It just picked up some interesting new tools um, such as its exclusive Z move and such. And basically it's splashable onto any draft team. So picking Mimikyu, I could work around it. And also I did know that I wanted to build a draft around Beware, which I didn't pick up until much later because I knew he probably wouldn't be chosen. But that gave me time to figure out what I was going to, to do there. Um, another Pokemon that goes well with Beware is Nihilego. Now granted, the synergy there is mainly in the physically offensive pressure and the specially offensive pressure and Nihilego gives me access to some entry hazards. And now thanks to Ultra Sun and Moon, I can get Ultra Beasts like Nihilego and capture them over and over if I need to. Normally I don't draft Legendaries or Ultra Beasts just because of how annoying it is to get them. But I figured one between two or three leagues isn't too bad. And it is, it's at this point that I decided, you know, I haven't done a rain team in a while, not since the LBA, I believe. So we're gonna do a rain. And so that means my next choice was Pelipper which is a fantastic rain setter. I'd much rather have Pelipper over Polito just for the options that Pelipper brings, such as being offensive or defensive, or even having hazard removal. Reliable recovery is also always great on your weather setter as well. And then I went ahead and picked up Mega Swampert in true Skyrender style. If you all have not seen, I think it was LBA maybe season six or seven? Skyrender had a rain team that he used in that, and he actually ended up using Pelipper and Mega Swampert and Kabutops. I took a little bit of a different direction with my draft because I went ahead and picked up Crocodile next. Crocodile 
provided a, an electric immunity that also gave me a little bit more versatility outside of rain. Like Swamp Bird is fantastic and you can even use it outside of rain. It can set up its own rain even. But Godal, Mimikyu, and, and Nihilego allow me options outside of rain, which I wanted to have kind of that style of, oh, is he gonna bring rain? Is he not going to bring rain? Options there are fantastic. Next pick was Gudra, which I was really excited to pick because I needed something that was a grass immunity, and that came down to Sap Sipper, basically, and Gudra is really fun for me to use. And I have a lot of it bred already, which is good because they take a long time to hatch those little gooby. After that, I finally picked up Beware, because we were getting close to the end of the draft and I didn't want someone to randomly take it when that's when I was basing my whole draft around. I think Beware is really slept on in a lot of UU and format, but in League format, its ability to pressure or run a variety of different sets without necessarily get, picking up something like Mega Lop Honey is really useful. Also, people don't realize how well it can take a hit on the physical spectrum as long as it's a contact. After that, Skyrender actually called out my next pick because I was, before I picked up Crocodile, I was going to get Clay Doll, and I was going to have Zoroark and Beware together, but I ended up getting Crocodile instead, so that means I don't need Clay Doll, so let's go ahead and get Kabutops, because why not? One of my, that is, Kabutops is still my second favorite Pokemon overall, uh, right after Venusaur, and I've used it before in League format, so this is kind of a return to form for me, but this is the first time I've used it when I've had access to z moves, so that'll be fun. And my final pick was Pharaoh Seed just because of, uh, I had two points left over, and I need I, I always like to draft efficiently and use up all the resources that I can, unless I foresee those resources being useful later, but I don't like to change my draft around too much after I draft the team. Um, and Feral Seed just kind of gives me that still type, gives me the grass type, while at the same time giving me entry hazards, and basically the only other thing that, that can do that is Ferrothorn, and he was really expensive. So yeah, I have plenty of knockoff switch-ins anyway, so. So this will be good. So yeah, that's a brief overview of the team. If you have specific questions about the way that the rules work in this league, leave them in the comments and I will get to those just so, you know, for clarification's sake. But I'm really excited and thank you again, Skyrender, for having me. This is going to be a fun league. Uh, definitely a, a more interesting concept than the standard type deal. I'll see you guys in the future. Thanks so much for watching the video. We'll talk to you later. Bye.